Hello everyone, in this uh, quick video I'm going to go over a rather simple CFA problem that will show you how you can think about uh, adding a diversified fund to an existing portfolio. So uh, when you are in a financial advisory role, you may come across clients who have already invested a portion of their wealth uh, in the stock market uh, and are now looking to add a fund uh, to their existing portfolio. And so this simple problem will give you an idea as to what factors should you uh, think about when trying to make that decision. So let's uh, get to the problem. All right, so let's suppose Harry Markowitz's current portfolio of $2 million is invested as follows. Uh, Short-term bonds, 200,000, domestic large cap equities, 600,000, and domestic small cap equities, 1.2 million. So this is how Harry has invested his $2 million across three different types of assets. As you can see, short-term bonds represent 10% of uh, the 2 million, uh, 600,000 is basically 30%, and then 1.2 is about 60%. You're also told what are the rates of return that uh, Harry is expecting on these three different types of assets individually. And so because we know what portion of the wealth is invested, uh, in each of these different types of asset classes, what is the expected return on the portfolio as well? It's just a weighted average of these individual returns. And the annual standard deviation of short-term bonds, domestic large cap equities, and domestic small cap equities are given as well, as well as the total portfolio standard deviation. Now we are further told that Harry soon expects to receive an additional $2 million and plans to invest the entire amount in an exchange traded fund or an ETF that best complements his current portfolio. And now you are the financial advisor and you are evaluating four funds which are shown in the table below. So you are considering fund A, fund B, fund C, fund D. Like which of the four should you advise that Harry invest in uh, to complement uh, their current portfolio. Uh, and you're further told that two criteria should be met as we are looking to decide which fund to include uh, in, the, in the overall investment portfolio. One, that uh, we want to maintain or enhance expected return. And secondly, we want to maintain or reduce volatility. Okay, so that is very important information. So uh, each fund is invested in an asset class that is not substantially represented in the current portfolio. Okay, so what that really means is that right now, uh, Harry's existing investments are such that they don't have a lot of current exposure to any of these four funds. The question now is that which fund would you recommend to Harry? Now, if you look at all these options carefully, you'll see that actually fund D makes the most sense in terms of which fund should Harry invest in, given the criteria. Uh, so for example, the expected return of fund D is 14%, which is higher than the 13.78% that Harry is making on his portfolio right now. So just by allocating a portion uh, of his wealth, uh, to fund D has the potential of increasing expected returns. Uh, perhaps more importantly, uh, the correlation of returns of fund D with the current portfolio is rather low. It's 0.65. Compare that to fund C and fund A. These are very positively correlated uh, with the current portfolio. They're, in fact, 0.9 is almost as high as one, which is the highest it can get. And as we know, uh, if we are interested in reducing our risk or preserving our risk, then we want to invest in those assets which are less than positively correlated with our existing portfolio. In fact, the lower the correlation, the better. Now, you might say, well, the lowest correlation then is for fund B. Why not invest there? Uh, we could consider it, except that the expected return there is 11%, which is less than the 13.78%. So we know that if we invest in fund B, uh, it will actually lower our expected return, even if it maintains or reduces our volatility. So on those grounds, fund B would be a no-no, which is why I have marked it in red.
Fund A offers the potential for increasing the portfolio returns, but again, like I said, it is too highly correlated uh, with the current portfolio to provide enough uh, volatility reduction through diversification. Uh, the same problem exists with Fund C. Fund C has the greatest potential to increase the portfolio returns because, well, it has an expected return of 16%, but again, is very highly correlated to provide a substantial volatility reduction uh, through diversification. So funds A and C are also a no-no. And so, well, we're only left with fund D. That would be the right option to go with given the criteria that our client is. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions using the comment section. Happy learning.